All right, what's going on, guys? So I'm here with a, kind of an array of pickups here over the last week. I took a vacation uh, and I got back, and I actually tried to just take some a couple days off of eBay searching and thinking about games while I was out of town. Uh, so I am back now, and I've got a few trades done and a few pickups. So let's go ahead and start with um, the PC Engine games, Turbo Graphics 16 games, I guess. I picked up three PC Engine games, uh, got them from the site that I normally buy at. Stuff goes up there for about 50 to 60 percent of what you would find it for on eBay. So the first one I got, this is actually my first, uh, or not my first, but this is a double PC Engine game. It's Honey in the Sky. I paid 18 bucks for that. That game goes around 40, but I mainly picked it up because so many people are getting into Turbo Graphics right now that I know eventually somebody's going to get into PC Engine and I'll have an extra game to trade to offer them that'll be just a really good addition a good shoot them up for their library uh, another game I got here uh, it's a game that I have actually been wanting for a while I know I say that a lot but uh, I have been looking at the, the Cuneo Crew dodgeball for quite a bit now uh, I've got actually on in the background a lot of people are familiar with the NES version there's also an SNK version but I believe I want to say that I believe that this is one of the original versions the Famicom Super Famicom probably is the first series but to me this is one of my favorite uh, versions of uh, Super Dodgeball all right and lastly for the PC Engine I picked up a copy of Nezer uh, man a pinnacle shooter for the Super CD-ROM for the uh, PC Engine. Some of the cutscenes from the very beginning, very dramatic intro cutscenes of this game. And then once the game starts, the music's very, very uh, lightheartedly epic for early 90s. But you get that really good CD quality sound. Um, uh, you know, excellent game. Goes for mid to high hundreds, maybe close to, a little, little under 200. Um, there's like one for sale on eBay right now for 180. I think that's a bit high. I think you could find this game. I paid like 80 something for this, so I think you could easily find it anywhere from what I paid up to about 115, maybe 135. Uh, but anything over that, you're gonna be paying, you know, buy now price. So definitely a must have for uh, any shoe collection for the PC Engine. Now the four Tumor Graphics games I got. I got two early year games. That's Victory Run and Vigilante, just to get those out of the way. Uh, I'm actually I'm at 44 cue card games now for the NTSC Turbo Graphics, and I'm not sure how many CD-ROM games are there. Nor am I really concerned about filling that collection. I'm mostly concerned about the cue cards right now. I really should be watching the CDs, and I am, uh, because they are going up in value also. Um, the, the funny thing about Turbo Graphics is that some games go extremely high in value because the demand affects the low quantity more. Whereas the early 89, 90, some 91 games, there's so much quantity of them that demand is affected negatively by the quantity and those prices stay in the teens. Uh, two games that are from the later years that hold value and are going up and will always go up and hold value. Uh, that's Somer Assault by Atlas, and then uh, Shockman. This is actually Shabibin Man from the Shabibin Man series on the PC Engine. So we got a version of Shockman. This game can go for close to 100 bucks, or it can go for over 100 bucks. And then Somer Assault. This game was going for about 30 to 40, or mid 30s around Christmas time, and now it's easily 60 plus. So uh, definitely good games to pick up. One of the few Atlas games for the U.S. Turbo Graphics. All right, so let's get to some uh, Game Boy games here. This is kind of the most what I'm most excited about here. So I traded a few Nintendo, a few traded like three Nintendo games: Gemfire, Baby Boomer, GI Joe by Taxan, um, the manual to Baby Boomer, and then I traded a um, a copy of Ninja Spirit. So uh, the first. It, box I got here is a Kid, a Kid Icarus. I got this and the manual. This, the game sells for about 13. I, we, we value this around 60 for the box and then, you know, throw the game in there. But uh, 
John Bones sold one of these for about $100, and it sold pretty fast. And that guy on eBay, he knows his Game Boy CVI prices. So anything he sells is pretty much right on the nose, or a little less than what things are actually worth. And if the faster it goes, obviously the more demand it is. But the Kid Icarus box alone can go for about 60 to 80, and then the game and the manual can go for about $10 each, respectively. Um, the manual might be worth more. So I do have the CIB now. The next game I got, I picked this up because it is extremely rare. The box is hard to find. There was only one CIB or box sold last year um, on eBay of, of Ramp Stoker's Dracula. I got this to match my CIB NES game. So that's kind of one angle I was going at with the collecting. Um, another game, another box I got, and this was just box only, was Gremlins 2. And then kind of the last game that I decided to throw in my CIC Ninja, second Ninja Spirit for, uh, considering there's a lot of Ninja Spirits out there and it's going for 20 to 25 bucks, um, there are no Fortified Zone CIBs out there. So I got a Fortified Zone CIB. And one thing interesting about this game, it's by Helico. This game has a scrapped game, like Sound Boy in it, which is a version, which is like a version of a sound like system where you can play the soundtracks from the game and you can actually arrange them however you want and play them in a row and there's like da a dancing pig and whatnot so it looks like something Helico had been working on but probably scrapped uh, and they threw it in this fortified zone game but yeah extremely rare but still only goes for about 20 25 bucks Else you got here. So, yeah, so those are my four uh, CIB Game Boy games, bringing me up to about 12, or I'm at 12 CIB uh, Game Boy games now. I actually still need the manual for Gremlins 2, but all of these three were CIB. All right, let's take a look at some Super Nintendo games, and then we'll get to the three NES games I got that are bringing me, that have brought me below 20 games needed for the NTSC Nintendo collection. So, Super Nintendo games I knocked out here were Cool Spot, and a lot of these games are about, so there's a few under $10, Dr. Frankenstein goes for less than 10 I don't know why, it's a rare, it's a rare game, I think somebody just bought a shit ton of it up one day and now there's just too many out there. I got Cool Spot, I got Time Slip, Time Slip is another one of those rare games, there's about two or three up on eBay right now, but it still goes for about $10. B.O.B. We all played B.O.B. growing up. My brother played B.O.B. Uh, to me, it's a very common game. This game actually has a 7 rarity rating on Nintendo Age. Uh, it's by Electronic Arts, but apparently it's pretty rare. And that game's going for about you know, 10, 15 bucks now. Uh, Robocop vs. Terminator. This game can go for 15 to 20 dollars online right now. Um, maybe just low production quantities. Don't really know. But uh, it looks like it's not one of those it's a, it's a, it starts off as a platformer, so I'm expecting it to be kind of a platformer game, but it, it looks pretty neat. And then I also showed you Dr. Frank in there. Super Nintendo, it's just easy to get those games still pretty cheap. I know it's not as cheap as they used to be, but in comparison to going from finishing the Nintendo into Game Boy and Super Nintendo, it's a lot lighter on my pockets. Okay, the first game I got here is one of the last... Um, Game show games I needed for Nintendo, and that's Family Feud. Uh, I had Hollywood Squares for a while, and I accidentally marked this off my list. But I just knew that I didn't have that funny look embroidery stitched patchwork uh, end label in my collection, so I picked this up. I actually got a box with it. I'm on the fence with these boxes. I, I see the passion and the love for their collection when somebody does this. But to me, this is just stuff in the collection that's not authentic, it's not genuine. Uh, it's it's I consider it art, but to me it obstructs the view of an actual video game collection. So I actually just throw these in drawers, and I'll probably give them away one day or trade them. All right. So the next game I got here is is NFL, NFL and NBA, I believe, or whatever the other one is. They have just the picture on the end labels, and they're from LJN. So whether I saw this and just always passed on it, or thought it was the different game. Um, I rarely ever see the NFL one, so this is pretty tore up, but I got it for a few bucks just to get it in the collection. There are, you know, like a dozen or so games, like, uh, 
I got a copy of Batman I want to upgrade here at the shitty label. I'm, I have a really bad label, Dracula 3, or Castlevania 3, so there are those games I want to upgrade, but anyways, got it to get myself below 20, and uh, I finally got myself a copy of Dragon Warrior 4. Um, I, I did trade a copy of Sunset Riders for this. I believe Sunset Riders will ultimately be worth more than this is. Uh, but Dragon Warrior, you know, this game was worth about 40 bucks forever. Sometimes you still still see them sit for 45, 55 bucks on eBay. Uh, but then sometimes they sell with a manual or something for like 80. So um, will this game ever go up in value? Probably not. Uh, but I, like I said, I just got it to get it out of my way. I would have rather kept Sunset Riders till it got to about $800 rather than the 60, 65 it's worth now. But getting Dragon Warrior 4 put me below 20 games left for the NES. So. Yeah, well, that's it, guys. Um, I should have some more stuff underway here soon, but uh, yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon. Peace.